Hello and welcome to yet another Ukraine war update. The 3rd Separate Assault Brigade has released a pretty insightful video of the start of their counteroffensive in the southern sector of Bakhmut from back in May. While the footage is from one of their earliest operations in the area, and therefore not recent it still shows a lot of unseen footage that gives a pretty good overview over how this battle was fought. The video is 26 minutes long in total, and I only included a small part from it here and advise you to go and watch the full video on their channel. I will include the link to the video at the end of this video so you can watch it right after this one. The part I included here shows clips from a mechanized assault on a Russian position that was not released till now. The video was mostly filmed from the helmet cameras of a M113 turret gunner and from the perspective of a machine gunner on the ground but the whole video shows the battles that took place in that corridor from multiple angles. The M113 provided covering fire while infantry assaulted and definitely faced Russian resistance. Later in the clip the vehicle gets hit by what was most likely an RPG and had to fall back. I said this was not from a recent event but since the video was just released I included it in this update. I think there have not been much videos showing the perspective of M113 turret gunners from this war what makes this pretty interesting in my eyes. In the full video you can see how the crew left the vehicle shortly after the RPG hit. Looks like the armored personal carrier got hit during a shoot and scoot maneuver while supporting the infantry that was assaulting the Russians. Besides that long video, the 3rd Separate Assault Brigade also released a short helmet cam video showing a marksman and a machine gunner engaging Russian forces in the same sector. This video is more recent I believe. Such marksman videos are mostly relatively unspectacular but for documentation purposes I included it here. In the original video there was a soldier that got WIA shown but I left it out. I don't want to sugarcoat anything but I think we all know that this stuff happens and out of respect for the soldier I decided to not show it. Speaking of marksmen again, here is an interesting video of the 77th Airmobile Brigade of Ukraine showing two snipers during a live fire exercise. The video is filmed through the scope of one of the sniper rifles as the target is engaged. The 77th Airmobile Brigade is a brigade of the Ukrainian Air Assault Forces formed in the summer of 2022. While this video is from a training exercise, it is still pretty interesting to see it through this perspective since we do not often get to see it through the lens of a sniper. This here is a pretty impressive clip showing a lone Ukrainian Humvee evading a pretty heavy Russian artillery barrage. The Humvee is stuck right in the middle of the fire and impacts can be seen landing all around. Miraculously, the Humvee was not hit as over 10 rounds landed in the vehicle's proximity. I can only imagine how loud this must have been for the soldiers inside and hope they all were wearing ear protection. The video has been released by the Ukrainian 93rd Brigade and I believe this was rocket artillery based on the intensity and dispersion of the fire. Not the first time the Russians used area weapons against point targets, but this was not the only close encounter for this Humvee. Looks like this guy's had a guardian angel on their side because shortly after the barrage the Humvee also had a near miss with a Russian FPV drone that wanted to finish the job but failed. As you can see this was very close but in the end the Humvee got away and kept driving. This video showcases pretty well how Russia currently mainly fights this war. Next to mines they use a combination of artillery and drones to halt Ukraine's mechanized assaults forcing them to conduct smaller sized attacks with mainly infantry. This turns Ukraine's counteroffensive into a fight for every inch of territory. This does not mean that Ukraine is not making gains but that they are pretty slowed down and pay a high price for every meter gained. What do you think about the current state of the war in Ukraine? Let me know in the comments. Also make sure to leave a like for the mighty algorithm. Only that way this channel and the videos can reach more people. Lucky as well was this Russian tank who captured a Ukrainian FPV drone landing direct in front of it as it was engaging Ukrainian targets. The slow motion was not added by me but it shows the small drone landing short in front of the tank. Right after this the tank begins to fall back. This update includes more Russian footage in the second half of this video. The vast majority of recent released footage was filmed by drones from both sides and shows pretty well how important they have become. However, not only Russia keeps making use of their artillery and drone assets. In this Ukrainian drone video we can see Ukrainian artillery targeting Russian positions with cluster munitions. The United States recently provided Ukraine with a bunch of DPICM rounds that are highly effective against area targets such as infantry, artillery and vehicle convoys. While there is much controversy about cluster munitions, there has to be said that Russia uses them as well. On the Zaporizhia front, a Ukrainian high-mobility artillery rocket system precision strike took out a Russian Buck air defense system. The anti-air system was located in a tree line when the strike struck the vehicle taking it out in the process. The high-mobility artillery rocket system is one of Ukraine's most formidable assets 
and so far it has been reported that Ukraine has not lost a single one to Russia. Due to its range and accuracy, I believe that it is the best performing piece of artillery that is currently used in this war. Ukraine has more Western artillery assets, but I think no other is as feared by Russian forces as this one. What is your opinion about this? Let me know in the comments. In the area of Bakhmut, another Ukrainian drone observed the work of a Russian Strela 10 air defense system as it was launching missiles. I do not know for sure if the Strela aimed for the drone that was filming, but some posts about this video claimed it. The Strela then gets destroyed by the Ukrainian 45th Separate Artillery Brigade. Currently, it seems that Ukraine puts a lot of focus on targeting Russian air defense, artillery and electronic warfare systems, but later more about this. Aerial scouts of the 30th Mechanized Brigade captured a Ukrainian FPV drone strike on a Russian Astonok counter-battery radar located on the rooftop of a building. It is a mobile radar for the purpose of detecting position of weapons such as field artillery and anti-aircraft weapons, calculating the trajectory of incoming shells and the control of unmanned aerial vehicles. The most recent footage came from the Zaporizhia front this time. In the area of Robotine, Ukrainian forces conducted another breakthrough attempt with Leopard 2 tanks and M2 Bradleys, but faced mines and heavy Russian resistance in the form of artillery and drones again. Here we see a rare glimpse of the attack from the ground filmed on a body cam by a Ukrainian soldier from inside a mine-resistant ambush protected vehicle. Later the soldiers leave the vehicle and start to engage with small arms fire. However, this is the only real ground footage released for now and most other videos from this battle were filmed by drones. Here you see a Ukrainian Bradley being targeted by a Russian FPV drone as it was deploying a smoke screen. Interestingly, the Bradley got hit just meters away from a trench and the attack was observed by at least two Russian drones showing the high amount of Russian drones used in this sector. Interestingly, the Bradley was hit just right in front of a larger trench system what could mean that the reports Ukraine reached the main defensive lines in this area actually could be accurate. This clip clearly shows that the Bradley was targeted from behind right after deploying smoke. While there were a lot of these videos released, I honestly have to say that most of them ended right after the hits and did not show the outcome of most attacks. The assault was conducted by Ukraine's 47th separate mechanized brigade that advanced towards the Russian lines under artillery fire. This time it looks like the vehicles kept more distance to each other than in previous videos we saw from this front. According to the deep state map, Ukraine captured 27.41 square kilometers towards Robotine in total since the start of the counter-offensive. They still face the same problem since then. The Russians had more than enough time to prepare themselves for the Ukrainian offensive and placed large minefields. Their artillery also already has range on the area so they do not have to do much besides spotting any incoming attacks and sending artillery and kamikaze drones towards the Ukrainian armored columns in response. In general they try to disable the vehicles with mines and or drones and then try to destroy them with artillery and anti-tank guided missiles. If that does not work they simply keep hitting the already disabled vehicles with drones. While most of the drone strike videos that will follow shortly after do not show any outcome besides the hits it is safe to say that Ukraine lost a number of vehicles during this attack. This is the nature of war and should not surprise anybody. Also there were a bunch of disabled and abandoned vehicles shown. The US already announced that it would provide Ukraine with a new batch of 32 Bradley infantry fighting vehicles to replace the lost ones. According to official reports Ukraine lost 20% of the equipment it had thrown into the offensive and saw a reduction of striking power by 30%. I would not go so far and say that the offensive totally failed so far, but of course this is not the outcome they hoped for. Even if their morale took a blow, they are far from giving up and that is a factor that should not be underestimated. During the beginning of the war, I often told in private that we should not underestimate Russia's willingness to throw its own people into the meat grinder, but same goes for Ukraine. They have proven that they are willing to take back every inch of occupied territory and are ready to pay with blood for it. While for Ukraine not everything goes according to plan, this surely also goes for Russia. I know what kind of comments will pop up after I said this, but honestly Russia is farther away from reaching the goals it set itself in this war than Ukraine. The proof are the clips you see right now. They invaded the country and wanted to pull off a fast and swift special operation like they did in Crimea. And now they are in the defense and the main major gain of their role model operation from 2014 namely Crimea itself is threatened. Even if this counter-offensive will ultimately fail and Russia is able to amass the resources it needs to launch a massive new large-scale offensive into Ukrainian-held territory again. It still has to be said that this will not mark the end of the war and shooting a bunch of Bradleys and Leopard 2 tanks in several square kilometer large minefields like fish in a bucket is one thing but to be on the offensive yourself and facing those vehicles that are very good in the defense is a totally different story. 
This, however, also does not change the fact that the West was and still is kind of arrogant when it comes to acknowledging not only Russia's capabilities, but also on gaps. The scenes we see right now are a price for this. Many of the Ukrainian units we saw had no previous combat experience and the fact that they were trained by the West can be an indicator of how the average Westerner would perform in such a war when suddenly drafted. Of course, this is only my opinion and now I might should take a trench myself to prepare for all the people who get angry that I show Ukrainian losses while criticizing the West and Russia at the same time. Military experts from the West currently say that the reason for Ukraine's slower than anticipated advances are gaps in the successful employment of combined arms tactics and the concept of fire and movement. I think that this is only partial true since this claims totally ignore the fact that Russia also has a saying in this matter and that Ukraine still lacks proper air cover and that is basically one of the major assets needed in Western doctrine. Also, nobody ever tried to pull off such a thing they tried to do here except the Russians who also failed. We're speaking about square kilometers of minefields, pre-range artillery, combat helicopters and omnipresent spotting by drones. Then there are also quite well working anti-air systems, jammers and other electronic warfare systems blocking all reconnaissance and striking depth capabilities. The experience and coordination needed for solving this issue has to be built currently and that sadly includes a lot of trial and error. I am pretty much a theorist myself, but I know for sure that you only can come so far with theory alone. The release videos by Russia also show Lancet strikes on Leopard 2 tanks. A certain news outlet that is very much liked by the YouTube algorithm wrongfully claimed that this video shows a missile hitting a Russian tank. This is not the case. I also make mistakes, especially with all the different variants of basically the same vehicles it is easy to get confused sometimes. But someone who uploads such content should definitely know how a Leopard 2 tank looks like or what do you think? Despite all the video footage from hits on Ukrainian vehicles this apparently was not the success the footage claims to show. And this is not said by me but by the pro-Russian outlet Rybar. According to them Ukraine reached their goals in this sector so far. They report that Ukraine mainly sends out smaller sized elements to trigger Russian responses to locate their artillery and other assets in order to take them out afterwards. Also they say that Ukraine actively hunts for Russian electronic warfare systems and air defenses in the Russian rear what would be backed by the footage of such attacks we saw in the first half of this video. It is undoubtful that Ukraine had vehicle losses here but still most of the FPV and Lancet strike videos only showed the hits and the later outcome was not made public. I expect that there will be more footage from this area in the next days and then we can say more. Here is a video of Ukrainians taking out one of the mentioned electronic warfare systems in the Russian rear. The system targeted here was a R-330 ZH Shittle electronic warfare system. The Royal United Services Institute noted that this system has had impacted GPS signals that Joint Direct Attack Munitions rely on. This directly affects the Joint Direct Attack Munitions accuracy which is its key selling point. Electronic warfare systems also affected the accuracy of high-mobility artillery rocket system strikes, which has forced the US to modify the software for GMLRS fired by high-mobility artillery rocket systems and limited Ukraine's precision strike capabilities. The Zhidl system is designed to protect brigade or division-level command posts against precision-guided munitions. It is reportedly able to jam Imarsat and Iridium satellite broadcasts within a limited region. On the Zaporizhia front, two more Russian electronic warfare systems were taken out as well. The two Borisov Lips 2 targeted here are Russian ground vehicle mounted, multifunctional electronic warfare weapon systems. They are designed to disrupt communications and GPS systems. Electronic warfare systems are a crucial aspect of modern military operations, designed to exploit, deceive, and disrupt enemy electronic sensors and communication systems. Here we see two lucky Ukrainian soldiers being spared from a Russian strike as a recovery tank passing by takes the hit for them. There are conflicting reports of either a FPV drone or a missile being used here, but all reports said that the soldiers were the initial target. While not from Ukraine but still related to the war in Ukraine, here we have footage showing a Russian fighter that flies dangerously close to a US MQ-9 before deploying flares from a position directly over an MQ-9 drone. One of the Russian flares struck the MQ-9, severely damaging its propeller. Despite the damage, the aircraft was able to return to its home base. The scenes were released by the US Department of Defense and are from Syria. It is not the first incident of this kind and such a maneuver caused the US drone to crash in the Black Sea before. No comment on this one. What do you think about this? Let me know in the comments. These are Ukrainian soldiers when the reports are correct. That's it for this video guys. Thank you very much for watching. The mentioned video from the beginning is linked in the info card in the top right corner of the video. As always you would help me out a lot by liking, sharing and commenting. 
Your feedback tells YouTube's mighty bots that this video deserves to be seen by more people. Make sure to subscribe, hit the bell and enable all notifications for this channel. That way you do not miss any new Ukraine war updates. Here the latest Ukraine war update is linked. If you like my work and want to support me further you can do so by buying me a coffee or via the thanks button here on YouTube. Thank you very much until the next time.